Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I would like to talk about the Asus Depot, which is an advanced cryogenic depot. Uh, advanced cryogenic something stage, evolved stage maybe, is what Asus stands for. It was meant to be a more advanced Centaur stage because we've had the Centaur stage since the 1960s. There's a stage that uses liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen very efficiently, so it's a very efficient rocket stage. But it doesn't last very long. It needs to do its stuff in about six hours or so. Uh, otherwise, it's no good. Uh, so at the ACES system is supposed to be able to hang out for a few days, maybe longer, uh, so that it can go to a whole trip to the moon, for instance. So that can be beneficial. In this case, though, it is meant to store fuel. And the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, which is very hard to store, and therefore, instead of just being the regular sort of stage, which is this part here, it's got an additional hydrogen tank and instead uses the bulk of this stage to store the oxygen. The hydrogen tank is covered in a sun shield. And so we have, I have developed a sun shield. So if I could click on it properly, its collider is a little bit, there we go. Okay. Extend the sun shield. So this is what the sun shield is like. So you can see the tank inside and this is all mylar covering uh, multi-layer insulation layers. Uh, a whole bunch of that stuff to make sure that the liquid hydrogen which has to stay at really really low temperatures stays cold and doesn't boil off so much. So that is our idea here. Now this whole business is actually assembled in relatively few parts. I made a special fairing and then uh, these are my RL10C engines and then there's the sun shield if I can there we go uh, and then this is all one part along with RCS thrusters at the bottom. This includes space for oxygen gas and hydrogen gas which is the boil off and in theory we will test this it has the capacity to store the boil off and cool the boil off so that restores the stuff so that's ultimately zero boil off. And I don't know how this sun shield will actually work. It has colliders on it. Uh, if I highlight it properly there, you can see there's a collider right here. But will that block sunlight? I don't know. So we're going to test a few things about this business. We've got a docking port down here. I think they said that the docking business was all the way up here, which means they would have to remove the engines, but I didn't like that, so I made a little like, bit of an extension. I'll link the graphic that I based this on in the video description. So this was based on a ULA graphic, presumably. And uh, propellant-wise, we have 126 tons. Well, a little bit less than that, actually. Uh, so... This was supposed to be an Asus 41 down here. And I forget what it was. I think it was 70 something. And these numbers were supposed to represent how much propellant they had. So it's 41 tons down here and 70 odd tons up there. We've got a little bit more than that in theory wet. And again, I had to make a special fairing for this because it's pretty wide and tall. Now, of course, uh, also because we're tucking in the what would be the upper stage of Vulcan. It's no longer sort of on the outside. But yeah, then we have Vulcan in, I guess you could call it a Vulcan heavy situation because we've got an extended Centaur stage, the Asus stage, which is much bigger now with four engines. And we've got all these boosters. You can see why we need four engines, 21 minutes. Of course, we don't intend to burn all of that. Uh, it's supposed to remain in the depot for other missions to access. But can we launch this? It's a horrible thrust weight ratio there. We won't get very far with these two stages. So that stage is going to have to do a lot of work. Hmm. Maybe we'll have to underfuel that stage for it to work out. I don't know. Uh, but we're going to test it out and find out. Uh-oh, uh uh-oh, uh hold on. Uh, I see a problem here. It's fil it's topping up the the hydrogen and oxygen gas. Incidentally, the RCS on the ACES stage runs on the gas, the hydrogen and oxygen gas, as it should. 
it does not run on the liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen so okay all the gas has been purged and let's try it throttle up SAS is on ignition of the BE4s and launch Well, we're going to have nice thrust weight ratio for only a limited amount of time here. So I'm not linking ACES in the video description yet. I'll get some feedback and maybe uh, we'll see about the details. I haven't decided whether to add it to the Vulcan folder or just have it in the experimental thing. Uh, so there's two different mods. There's the Real Rockets mod and the experimental one. And I haven't really decided which one to put it with. So we're obviously going steeply to make sure we have time for the upper stage. Okay, booster set. Alright, they're gone. I feel like the fairing is a little bit too smooth somehow. <laughs> it's a very suspicious fairing. There is a fuel cell, of course. That runs on the liquid hydrogen and oxygen, even though in theory it would run on the gaseous one. It was just easier to deal with that. Okay. I think fairing sep. Off they go. Okay, separation and ignition. We're going slower. <laughs> well, this is gonna be tough, isn't it? Let's go up to 45 degrees. Maybe we can't send it up fully fueled we'd have to send some other trips to add fuel to it which I, i'm sure they would plan on doing sending it fully fueled is probably optimistic hmm. well now it's picking up orbital speed <laughs> the thrust weight ratio though i swear that's less than advertised uh, 0.35 i mean on the g meter that doesn't look quite as much huh so, of course, if you wanted to do legit operations, maybe you'd get a Kerbal to do some KIS, KAS stuff and remove the engines. Once it is in orbit and everything. It'd be an interesting case of engine recoverability if we actually sent, like, a little shuttle to grab the engines off of stages. Uh, that could be interesting. A Falcon 9 upper stage up there and then send a, like a dream chaser up to grab the engine. <laughs> I don't know if the engine would fit inside a dream chaser, but... Where is the sun anyway? Well, can't really say we're a low boil-off tank right now. The sun really isn't hitting the... This tank. I don't know if... If we extend the sun shield, well, let's see. Boil off is, you can sort of see the rate there. I doubt this will make any difference at all. <laughs> I don't know how to make it have a difference. That's something perhaps somebody has some input on. Well, vertical speed is trending to zero. So maybe we can make it. Uh, I might have wanted even more pitch. <laughs> earlier. We're in the atmosphere again. I really don't like the Vulcan rocket that much to be honest as far as me launching it is concerned. I always get into this sort of it's going back into the atmosphere trouble. Now I have to pitch down again because I overdid it. And probably we'll end up having carried even less than the capacity of a Vulcan Heavy because we relied on this stage too much. 
Well, it'll get into orbit, but it's going to be in a super lopsided orbit at this rate. Okay, well, that's technically orbit. We've got only 25 tons left, so we could do with underfueling this. But let me test out some of the basic stuff here. Uh, so we've got the sun shield out. That's looking good. Fuel cell. Uh, well, it'll probably have to be down to 95% or something. So we'll see when we lose enough power to have the fuel cell working. So start hydro gas production. Okay, so that's giving us more hydro gas. Start oxygen production. That's creating more oxygen. Let's create a fair amount of oxygen and a reasonable amount of hydrogen. So this is basically just warming it up so that we can use the thrusters. Okay, RCS on. Okay, that's working, and it's only using the oxygen. I was afraid of that. I can fix that, though. I know what's going on. They operate at 280 seconds ISP. I don't know what would be good for the gas, but in theory, hydrogen gas alone can do 280 seconds ISP, so probably they can be managed. Okay, so that works. And, but overall, the whole sun shield thing is, it looks good. It's good for looks. It's not doing what it's supposed to do, though. Okay, the other feature is start the hydrogen cooling, which takes away the hydrogen gas and restores our liquid hydrogen. We want to make sure that, if anything, the vessel mass goes down. We should not be gaining mass through this conversion. Oh, I was afraid of that. I don't understand it. It is supposed to be 200 units of the hydrogen gas to one of the liquid hydrogen. But here we are gaining mass, which is definitely not supposed to happen. Conservation of something or another. Um, uh, okay, stop that. Start oxygen cooling. That's gaining even more. Maybe, maybe it's 100 to 1? I'll double check that. Okay. But in theory, functions work, except we haven't tested the fuel cell. I think right now it's consuming the hydrogen and oxygen to keep the electric charge at that level. I think it restores at 95%, and that's 95%. So that seems to be working. Uh, boil off right now, it still exists, even though we're on the nighttime side, which is interesting. Hmm. Okay. Well, I've got a few things to fix, but let's see if we can launch a little bit better so we get more than 25 tons to orbit uh, by underfueling the ACES stage. Oh, sorry, I just checked the configuration. It was already 100 to 1. I misread it because it was converting 200 units of hydrogen gas to 2 units of liquid hydrogen. So, I don't know. Um, I thought that was the ratio, but... Maybe it's something else. Anyway, so trying to figure out how much we should fuel this to help ourselves out. Even if we go halfway, that's 1,200 more there. Nice thrust weight ratio there, though. Will we end up with more? Let me lock this stuff right now, and we'll try that. So we'll half fuel it and see what happens. We could imagine, and it'd be fair to do so, that uh, only the ASUS-41 would be fueled initially and then they'd send more up. But uh, we're a little bit more than that right now. So what would happen is this this has a hydrogen and an oxygen tank, and then a, but eventually they'll send the hydrogen and something else. The hydrogen isn't that heavy. And then just fill this up with oxygen. Actually, probably only the hydrogen tank, but anyway. Just because of the ratios. Okay, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. That's an odd sound from those. 
I did not make those SRVs, so I take no credit. And I think those are stock plumes. Well, I'll unlock the stuff up here now. Okay, booster set. Alright, well, we're above 100 kilometers. Let's try fairing set. Okay, they are off. Don't know exactly what pitch I should be at at this point. Try that. Okay, separation ignition. I think that's pretty high. I don't think I need to pitch up. Okay, yeah, definitely overdid the apoapsis this time. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, well, still lopsided, but 29 tons. Anyway, could do better, but I think uh, I'll leave it there. So I'll have some configuration fixes, but we're not done figuring this sort of situation out yet. I'll get your thoughts. Yeah, I mean, again, it looks the way it should, but it's not acting the way it should. So I'll continue working on that. And again, I'll... I'll link where I got the concept from in the video description. But with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.